This is an attempt to recreate a project I tried back in med school, which was making carbonated jello. Now, at the time, I just dissolved the jello in as small a volume of boiling water as I could, and then added very, very cold carbonated water. And it wasn't that great, it was a very subtle effect. This time, I have a secret weapon, and that weapon is dry ice. And I'm really hoping that that takes my carbonated jello to the next level. So here's the plan. I'm going to put the jello in the pressure cooker along with the dry ice. I'm going to insulate the dry ice so that it doesn't directly freeze the jello because that would be bad. And this will allow the pressure cooker to confine all the sublimating carbon dioxide and Pressure cookers, by design, release the pressure before it gets to dangerous levels, and therefore I won't explode a closed container and die. Um, now, within the pressure cooker, the pressurized carbon dioxide is a lot more likely to enter solution, and so it dissolves into the jello before it sets, and hopefully when the jello sets, it kind of locks it into solution. I don't know if that will work or not. Um, and again, most of the cooling really needs to come from the fridge and not from the dry ice, uh, because if any of the jello actually freezes, that will drive the carbon dioxide out of solution as well, which is going to ruin my whole carbonated jello experiment. So back to my first person view here. I've had some water boiling so that I can dissolve the jello and I'm just going to take it carefully out of the microwave here. This isn't an ad for jello, I just find it easier to dissolve than regular gelatin. So get that jello nice and stirred into the hot fluid. We're not going to let it set right away because I want it to cool for a bit, uh, but I do need to make sure that it's well dissolved in solution and looking homogeneous, no grit at the bottom, and uh, that will eventually be combined with the carbonated fluid as well. I'm going to set a timer here for 10 minutes, which should be enough time for it to cool for a bit. All right, it's been 10 minutes. There goes that timer. And what I'm going to do now is pour the jello into the final mold area. Uh, which is just a circular Pyrex I have, which is small enough to fit into that pressure cooker. Uh, and then I'm going to add the carbonated water to that and mix it together. And then I'll put it inside the pressure cooker. And my carbonated water has been sitting in the freezer, but I've made sure it hasn't been sitting in so long that it's actually frozen. And... Uh, when I add it to mixture, you can see that immediately a lot of the carbon dioxide does bubble out. And this is because when water is cold, a lot of gas can dissolve in it. And when it's warmer, less gas can dissolve in it. And when we add this to the warm jello mix, it's immediately warming up and letting a lot of the carbon dioxide leave solution. Um, I'll take that and very carefully lower it into the pressure cooker without spilling. You can see that I've molded some aluminum foil around this for insulation. The reflective side is out, and the plan is to put the dry ice around that. Uh, for that, I'm going to wear some winter gloves, because you should never handle dry ice with your bare hands. It will give you frostbite very quickly. And uh, by the time your fingers are numb, you won't really be able to tell if it's happening. So I got the dry ice here. You'll see a little bit of a cut in places where I had to take it out of the styrofoam and just break it against the counter. But basically, I just need a bunch of small pieces to distribute kind of around my jello. 
make sure none of it is in direct contact with my uh, actual jello container. Um, I, this will become important later, um, but I think I, I, I wanted to put this big chunk in. That ominous sound you're hearing is actually just this large bit of dry ice coming into contact with the much warmer metal and sublimating and vibrating against as gas is generated, it pu being pushed away and then being pushed back against the metal. Uh, anyway, once you've got some chunks of dry ice in there, you can put the pressure cooker, cooker back together, seal it. Um, I checked the pressure at this point just to see if the gas was building up. And yep, hear a hiss. Sounds like it's pressurizing. That's great. Into the fridge it goes, and I'm just going to wait for several hours. Ooh. You hear that hiss? That's going to be important later. Remember that that happened. That actually kept happening after I put it into the fridge and uh, closed it. Periodically, it was discharging. Anyway, now we're just going to wait for a couple of hours and come back to this. That's another time skip. It's been about three and a half hours. I'm going to take the jello out and see if it's set. Um, I know I've mentioned this on a previous video, but these narrations are usually done after the actual recording of the video, so this is not my live reaction of looking at it, but I'll try to recreate it as best I can. Um, first, I check to see if there's any pressure. None. That's actually good. That means that, you know, the dry ice has finished sublimating. There's none left inside the container. I put a reasonable amount of dry ice in, but look at this. There is are so many bubbles at the surface. Actually, like you may think that that's an intended effect. I didn't actually want that because if I see a bunch of bubbles, that means that everything has, some of the carbon dioxide that was dissolved in it has actually left solution at some point because it had to leave to form those bubbles. And it's clearly boiled over and spilled into the pressure cooker here. And that's kind of disappointing. But we'll see. I, I'll take a spoon out here and uh, actually try to take a spoonful and see if I can taste it. And it looks, as I scoop into it, like the bubbles are all at the surface. And that's probably okay. It's just kind of like a cool texturing, I guess. It doesn't look bad. It looks like it could be an intended effect, but let's take a look at it in the light and eat it. And, uh, yeah, actually, that that's bubbly. It's fizzy. It's like Pop Rocks. It's, it's subtle, but you'll notice it even if you're not looking for it. The very first version that I made in med school was, um, you really wouldn't notice it unless somebody had told you, hey, really pay attention to the fizz. Uh, but this is, this I can taste just by putting in my mouth. So let me see here. I, I was hoping to catch some bubbles as I scooped it up, but I don't really see any. So what happened here? Um, well, I accounted for one failure mode here, which is that freezing the jello will drive the carbon dioxide out of solution, but I didn't account for another failure mode, which is that having pressurization and depressurization cycles uh, can cause rapid bubble formation and cause these bubbles up at the top. And if I don't want that effect, I'm gonna to have to do something about that. Do you remember the hiss of the pressure cooker as I put it into the fridge and I said it just kept hissing like that? Um, I'll explain that a little bit more. Pressure cookers actually have two steady states. There's one, which is the intended use, where gas builds up very slowly and the pressure only ever builds up to the point where the force against the valve just equals the weight of the valve. And any excess gas is produced slowly, just kind of leaks around the side. That's a slow, steady hiss that you hear when the pressure cooker is at pressure and operating as intended. But there's another steady state as well. And this is when gas builds up very quickly and produces a lot of pressure inside the cooker. Uh, when this happens, the pressure can build up to the point where the force exceeds the weight of the valve, and when it exceeds the weight of the valve, it can kind of pop up and get into the second state. And now when the valve is kind of 
not to skew like this. It takes less pressure to keep it in that position, but there's a lot more gas flow that can escape. This is also by design, because if you're boiling liquid too fast, it can all escape. But here, this can cause rapid depressurization, and the steady state pressure is actually much lower. And we don't really want that rapid depressurization because it causes those bubbles to form. So how do we fix this? The ideal case is that I don't use enough dry ice that it ever goes through the cycle of pressuring. It doesn't go into that second state of the valve being knocked up. What I want is a good steady pressure until the jello sets so that the carbon dioxide gets into solution and hopefully as the jello sets it kind of locks the carbon dioxide as carbonic acid into the gelatin matrix. So I did actually try this with one more batch because I had dry ice left over. What I did was I added dry ice to the pressure cooker and then if it was doing that pressurization depressurization thing, I'd remove dry ice until it stopped doing that. And look, this actually turned out a heck of a lot better. There's no bubbles up at the surface. You can see some at the side, but this is exactly what you want. And yeah, that's how to make carbonated jello.